and the All Indiana Podcast Network. This is the News 8 Daily 8 Podcast. A Wish TV News 8 update. Hello, I'm Jeremy Jenkins, and this is your News 8 Daily 8 Podcast for Tuesday, October 15th. Credit Karma is your evolved financial assistant, making managing your finances simpler and more tailored to you. Join us at creditkarma.com to start your personalized financial journey today and continue to grow with our innovations. Credit Karma. Evolve your finances. Explaining football to the friend who's just there for the nachos? Hard. Tailgating from home like a pro with snacks and drinks everyone will love? An easy win. And with Instacart helping deliver the snack time MVPs to your door, you're ready for the game in as fast as 30 minutes. So you never miss a play or lose your seat on the couch or have to go head-to-head for the last chicken wing. Shop game day faves on Instacart and enjoy $0 delivery fees on your first three grocery orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Other fees and terms apply. We begin with an update to the Delphi murders case. While most of the jury is seated, a pair of alternates still need to be chosen. News 8's Kyla Russell reports. Here at the Allen County Courthouse, all 12 jurors were decided. Two alternate positions were also picked. That leaves two alternate positions still left to be decided. Of the 14 that have been chosen, eight of them are women and six of them are men. Those that are on the jury panel will be tasked with the decision of whether Richard Allen murdered Carroll County teens, Abby Williams and Libby German. Special Judge Francis Gohl was aiming to question 100 potential jurors. Only half had been questioned. The jurors' jobs range from all over. One is a school counselor, one is a nurse, and one works with kids. At least two of the chosen jurors have a family member that currently works in law enforcement or has worked in law enforcement in the past. Before the jurors were picked, Judge Gohl asked the 50 potential jurors in the room if they had heard about the case. About 65% of them raised their hand to say yes. When asked whether they can set aside any bias they may have, most said they would be able to. At least four potential jurors said they would not be able to put those thoughts aside and had made up their mind. Richard Allen is accused of murdering Carroll County teens Abby Williams and Libby German in February of 2017. He was arrested in the fall of 2022. We confirmed the jury will be sequestered. That means every chosen juror will be taken 100 miles away to Carroll County for the trial. They'll stay in a hotel and have no contact with the outside world for at least a month. Many potential jurors said they would struggle mentally and financially. Richard Allen was also in court. His hands were not bound to his chest and he was wearing a simple button-down shirt. He took notes and nodded at potential jurors as they were questioned. The session also gave us a little glimpse into what the trial could look like over the next month. Both the prosecution and the defense rattled off the long list of names they plan to call as witnesses. The prosecution says they plan to call around 50 names, and the defense plans to call around 120. Reporting here in Fort Wayne, I'm Kyla Russell for Wish TV. WishTV.com or follow us on Facebook for updates. On to some news out of North Carolina, where police have identified the man arrested and charged with threatening FEMA workers with an assault rifle. Police say 44-year-old William Jacob Parsons was arrested Saturday. Officials say they received a call about a man with an assault rifle making comments about harming FEMA employees working in the North Carolina mountains. When officers located Parsons, they found a handgun and a rifle. It appears to stem from misinformation about FEMA that's largely been spread by right-wing extremists on social media. Some of those stories just continue to persist at the cost of delivering uh, needed resources to disaster survivors. Parsons has been charged with going armed to the terror of the public. He is currently out on bond. On to a story making national headlines. A new wave of lawsuits accused Sean Diddy Combs of rape, including an allegation that he molested a 16-year-old boy. At least six new lawsuits have been filed against the hip-hop mogul, who already faces federal sex trafficking charges. The lawsuits were filed anonymously by the same attorney who was representing at least 120 other alleged victims. Combs has pleaded not guilty to the federal charges, and his attorneys blasted the new lawsuits, calling them clear attempts to garner publicity. Back to local headlines. NDOT is moving up downtown I-65 construction. The agency is scheduled to repair the southbound portion of the interstate just before the north split. News 8's Hernan Gutierrez reports. It's scheduled to start 
tonight at 9 p.m. It means you won't be able to use this off-ramp onto 11th Street to get to Meridian Street. The whole stretch will be closed until the end of the month. The closure starts at West Street and goes to Alabama Street. As you guys mentioned, it's just before the North Split. According to INDOT, lane closures will start at 29th Street going southbound, and all traffic will be forced off at West Street. During this closure, crews will repair bridge joints and patch potholes on the road. An INDOT spokesperson says they moved up the start date of this work by three days to get ahead of November weather. The move is also due in part to an influx of expected visitors for a certain concert at Lucas Oil Stadium. We know Taylor Swift is coming to Indianapolis, and we are trying to get out of the way of those folks who are driving to Indianapolis for that Taylor Swift concert in November. This work was originally scheduled to start on October 18th. INDOT says it should take 16 days to complete. If they stay on schedule, that would mean the interstate would reopen on Halloween. INDOT suggests taking West Street south to I-70 or using I-465 to get around the closure. Reporting downtown, I'm Hernan Gutierrez for HTV, HTV.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. Let's talk sports. The Pacers' first preseason game at home featured a familiar face to area basketball fans. Former Purdue great Zach Eady was back at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, this time with the Memphis Grizzlies. He finished with 23 points as the Grizzlies beat the Pacers 120-116. The Pacers close out preseason play this Thursday at home against the Charlotte Hornets. When it comes to the weather, we are in for cooler temperatures today along with some on and off showers. Meteorologist Ryan Morse has your News 8 Daily 8 forecast. Now this morning, we're still waking up to a few of these showers, and we'll be eyeing this through today. Same thing goes, coming off of Lake Michigan, we have a couple showers exiting eastern Indiana. But we'll see through the midday and early afternoon if some of these showers continue to make it down to central Indiana. Otherwise, I still think the vast majority of us will be dry. Live look at Cicero, temperatures in the low to mid 40s, our American flag pretty still. Winds not expected to be as crazy. I know we were gusting 2025 20, at points early afternoon yesterday. I don't think that's going to be the case today. Now, it may be cooler waking up when you compare it to prior days. 45 degrees here in Indianapolis, but that is right around average for this time of year. And how about Kokomo? Back to 38 degrees, 47 in Bloomington, and 39 in South Bend. Here's futurecast for today, showing some of those showers trying to drop into central Indiana midday into the early afternoon. And then I think as we go on through the evening forecast, still have to watch coming off Lake Michigan, but everyone else should start to see some of those temperatures drop off. The big thing for tonight is we have some of those frost advisories in place. Northwestern Indiana down through Indy, cloud cover may impact our temperatures not getting as low. I'll have more on that in just a few minutes. But today, temperatures getting into the mid-50s, winds out of the north 10 to 15 miles an hour, clouds dropping off later on today and we'll see how the cloud cover sets up for tonight and that's going to be critical in who gets down to the frost and potentially freeze mark high temperatures below average for today 55 here in indy 54 in bloomington 56 in washington and 56 in Terre Haute. so we're challenging the frost mark for some areas tonight even cooler temperatures expected for thursday morning i'll have more on that coming up in my full forecast to get a look at Ryan's full forecast, just head over to wishtv.com or you can download the Wish TV Storm Track 8 app. And don't forget to check out our Storm Track 8 weather blogs. We wrap things up with a story that's, let's just say, out of this world. NASA has launched a spacecraft that's headed for Jupiter's moon, Europa. The Europa Clipper could reveal whether that moon's massive hidden ocean could support life. Scientists say Europa could have more than twice as much water as the Earth's oceans. What we learned with Clipper and the habitability of Europa, this is going to pave the way for the future, for future missions to Europa and elsewhere in our solar system where we can search more directly for life. The mission first started in 2013 and still has a long road ahead. It will take the Europa Clipper five and a half years to travel the 1.8 billion miles to Jupiter's moon. The exploration is set to last until 2034. This has been your News 8 Daily 8 podcast for Tuesday, October 15th. I'm Jeremy Jenkins for Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. This is the News 8 Daily 8 podcast, a Wish TV News 8 update on demand. For even more, on demand and on the go. 
Connect with Wish TV on Facebook at wishtv.com and on the free Wish TV mobile app. Thank you for listening. And be sure to like, subscribe, and follow this podcast for updates every weekday morning on the All Indiana Podcast Network and wherever you get your podcasts.